I love the sound of Swedish quality. Sixty-five Volvo 1800S. My father had a black 64 Volvo P1800. Looked the same as this car, except the bumpers and the grille were a little different. It was also red interior. He would drive the kids to school, and my little baby sister would sit in the back. There's a small seat in the back, and my baby sister would ride. So she thinks that I have bought and restored this car for her. His was a P1800. The first four years of production, Volvo contracted with Jensen of England, and all the Volvo P1800s were made by Jensen in England. Even though they had signed a contract to make 30,000 of them, Volvo was unhappy with the quality. And so in the swap over from 64 to 65, they canceled the contract with Jensen, moved production to Sweden, and changed the designation from P1800 to 1800S. A lot of folks think the S stands for sport. Nope, it stands for Sweden. <laughs> They replaced the S with the P1800E and then the ES. The ES was their little station wagon coupe. Unique in that it had no frame around the rear glass hatch which would open. First car that didn't have a metal frame around the glass window that would open and close. A lot of folks really like the station wagon, the ES. Then again, a lot of folks like me prefer the coupe, particularly the early coupes. You can see an early one a couple of ways. The chrome that goes down the side curves up to the back of the door. On later versions, the E, for example, that chrome strip, which is thinner, goes straight back. It does not curve up to meet the chrome strip that goes back over the lovely tail fin. And this is a big four in this thing, right? Is that what that it, is? It's a 1.8 1, 1. liter four-cylinder. So medium size. Four yeah, cylinder. the B18B, the hood being somewhat long, a lot of people think it's probably got a six cylinder in it, but no, it has a 1.8 liter B series engine, which is famous among car lovers because it's extraordinarily reliable. Twin SU carburetors. It was always a four cylinder. They did increase the displacement later. They went to a B20B engine and took the carburetors off and put fuel injection on in the E series and the ES. Mm -hmm extremely dependable did well in racing during the day this one is largely original it has a generator rather than an alternator a vacuum boost for the brakes front wheel disc brakes one of the earlier examples of disc brakes being standard equipment found this car about three miles as the crow flies from where we are standing <laughs> at the base of Linville Mountain, out in Franklin County. Sitting outside, didn't look quite like it looks today. It's uh, come along very nicely. Had to refresh in the interior, and I've done a lot of detail work on it. It was a good, solid, rust-free, which is absolutely a plus. It, the first owner on the car in the mid-60s bought into a product called Z-Bart, mm -hmm. which you'd have a shop inject inside the body panels. It was a rough proofing compound and he went overboard and probably had it done three times. It's thick inside that car. Hence the car is extremely rust-free example. Like some other cars they do tend to rust but this one has been protected. Volvo Character. ran print ads for this car comparing it to similar design and similar looking Ferraris. This obviously is a poor man's version. It does have a lot of Italian influence. Do you have a back seat? Yes. Okay. It has a small back seat. 
Like for a person? <laughs> for just for a, a child. Okay. Actually also serves good for luggage storage. In fact, it has leather luggage straps. It does not have seat belts for the back. Now, on seat belts, this was one of the very, very first cars that had shoulder harnesses. Has quite a unique system of, of buckling you in. And boy, you're not going to move when you're buckled in this car. Uh, of course, Volvo has always been known for safety and quality of manufacture. And th this car certainly exhibits that. As soon as I saw this ring, the nostalgia, it brought back, because that's exactly the original as it was, and your shoulder harness, attach it snapped into the ring, very secure, unusual, a very, very early example of shoulder harnesses. And as of car cars of this vintage had, we have wonderful vent wings, that provide great fresh air. That was the air conditioning of the 1960s. The 1800 up until the last few years, well known for the turquoise facing of the instruments. Rather unique dash. There's also an unusual cluster of instruments right in front of the driver. The top one is water temperature and the bottom is oil temperature, which you don't find on many production automobiles. There is a four-speed manual transmission, very, very smooth transmission, with a electric overdrive, which is activated by this stalk. When it's on, you'll have a magenta light illuminated right here. Another unique part of the ignition system, the coal goes through the firewall into the inside of the car. And the hot lead from the coal to the ignition system is underneath the dashboard. It's not in the engine. That was done as an anti-theft protection, so you can't hot wire the car. The Volvo 1800 was featured throughout the run of a television program called The Saint. He had a white Volvo P1800. The star of the show was Roger Moore, who was also known as James Bond, though the Volvo 1800 never made it to a Bond movie. There have been numerous of them shown in movies. I could see Jason Bourne stealing one of these, but he couldn't hotwire it. Couldn't hotwire it. <laughs> Only good-looking Volvo ever made. When, when people ask me about cars that I might have, I say, oh, yes, I've got an old, square, boxy, soccer mom Volvo. And then they see it, and oh, that's not a square car. Mm -hmm.